everyone, Jeff Lee here coming to you from Able City, Chicago. I'm actually in town for education and we had a special guest visitor stop by the other day. It is a brand new Epic W Gemini 5K S35. So it is the same Epic W body that we were used to using, you know, it has the Helium 8K sensor, but now with a brand new sensor, uh, completely designed from scratch. It's actually interesting, you may have heard of the Gemini sensor previously a few days ago. There's a couple of press releases, how they said they made several cameras, a very small batch for a very special client uh, made for space exploration, meaning taking videos up in space. The low light capability was one of the big shining points. Turns out that wasn't just for the space uh, you know, community, actually it's available for everyone else too. So with this new sensor, one of the big selling features of course is the fact that it has a dual sensitivity mode. So it is a unique circuit for both the standard ISO range as well as this low light ISO range, uh, which is what they're calling it. So within the menus, you'll see down through the standard ISO menu, you'll see that you have a standard and a low light selection. When you kick on the low light, it takes two seconds to make the flip because it is kicking in a brand new circuitry. And once you do that, you'll notice that you have a different range of ISO values presented to you from 1600 to 12,800. Whereas in standard mode, you're looking at 240 ISO to 1600 ISO. So with this new sensor design, you know, low light is really the name of the game. Uh, it is a 5K sensor, so it is uh, 30.72 by 18 millimeter, which gives us a diagonal of 35.61 millimeter. It is a little bit different aspect ratio from the standard red full format on the other cameras. So because of the extra height, it's actually a little bit better for anamorphic usage, right? Having that extra vertical resolution is always beneficial for that application. So kind of a unique aspect of this sensor as well. Again, brand new sensor design. Uh, however, it inherits or keeps many of the kind of classic and kind of tried and true red workflow. Uh, so meaning R3D, Red Code Raw, ProRes or Avid files uh, simultaneously on the same mag. Uh, it supports up to 300 frames at the 2K resolution, or at 5K you're shooting 96 frames, or at 4K you have 120 frames per second. Um, all the other unique features within the RED ecosystem all apply here as well. So having the dual sensitivity of course means it's great in low light, but also has the same circuitry to go to a standard mode, which is fantastic because you maintain that same 16 and a half stops of dynamic range. Now, it's not just meant for low light. I think having that dual circuitry means that you're able to use it in standard shooting up conditions, much like what we're shooting in right now. But if you are in an environment where you need to extract the extra detail out of the shadows, you're shooting in candlelight situations or just in general low light, astrophotography, et cetera, having that secondary circuit is, I think, a huge time saver for a lot of documentary wildlife shooters. Uh, you know, folks that don't shoot maybe scripted stuff all the time, you know, being able to make that decision jump back and forth. When you switch into low light mode, the camera will actually switch into a brand new black shade calibration. So if you've worked with RED before, you know you run through a black shade or a uh, calibration. When you go through that in the menus, it actually gives you the option to run a calibration for both the standard and the low light, or whichever mode you're currently in. Uh, again, you want to maximize the performance of the camera by making sure you run a calibration in the shooting environment you're in based on the shutter speed that you'll be using. Uh, with the auto mode that they have in all the DSMC2 cameras, this simplifies the whole process. But the manual mode where you can select up to four different shutter speeds in order to run a calibration still exists as well. So the existing workflow, existing tool set uh, all exists within the RED ecosystem. So if you're familiar with the DSMC2 family, uh, you feel right at home with this. Having a 5K sensor that's a Super 35 is also really interesting because that means you're not cropping. You know, one of the things with the 8K Super 35 Helium sensor is when you want to shoot either different frame rates or just a lower resolution, you have to crop a window in on the sensor ever so slightly, which does change your angle of view on the lens. With the 5K Super 35 sensor here, you actually maintain the full angle of view so you don't lose any of that and your lenses, the angle of view on your lenses stays the same uh, throughout. And again, at 96 frames, you still have a lot of frame rate options available to you. So that concludes our first look at the brand new Red Epic W Gemini 5K S35. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.